Okay guys, so we got this 2008 BMW X5 with the 4 point, what is it, 4.8 liter? And it has these two codes for the, uh, for the water valves. So we got this, uh, water valve passenger side, it says high only. And we got the water valve driver side. So I'm going to look these codes up, see what they are. Uh, I haven't done any testing yet, but... Just so you guys know, the water valves are right here. I set the test light up. I mean, the uh, sorry, the flashlight up. But that's the water valve right there and the connector right there. That's what controls the water to each side. And it, those screws look really, really rusty and kind of wet. So I'm wondering if they're leaking. I wonder if it's leaking the coolant through there. So we'll get our probably have to get a test light and then you can put a test light in there and then we'll see if it turns on or off but I want to get a diagram first and look see what these codes say okay guys so I got a diagram here I couldn't bring up the codes but we got our water valves right here so we should have a yellow and violet a yellow brown so that's gonna be our our uh, passenger and then our driver's side it should be and then we're gonna have our ground which is the brown so if we come down here look at that see we have our brown we have our yellow and violet and we have our yellow and brown so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my test light and I brought another back probe pin here so we're going to back probe into the ground we're going to put our test light on one of the circuits after I find my probe that just fell oh look at that I landed right in the belt too what are the chances of that? So I'm gonna get that, and I'm gonna probe that, and then we'll see if our test light lights. Okay guys, so I got my test light on there. Can you see that? There you go. And uh, now I'll turn the key on. We might have to start the car up. I don't know when these turn on. So we're either gonna have to turn the car on Let's see. Yeah, it's not on. So we might have to. Uh, another variable is if the circuit's disabled. So we may have to wait for this to warm up, too. Try going in. I'm going to try to move this into the other pin and see if that one works up. So the other one does not light up either. Now, I don't know if we have to set this to heat. Like, the car might have to warm up. I didn't look to see. You can also turn the AC off. Let's turn our temperature up, because that might be why that isn't. There we go. So now we're on hot. See that? 84, 84. Let's go see what it does out here. We got nothing on this one. I'll move this. I'm gonna let the scan tool up, see if we can control these before this gets too hot. Do 
Yeah, we have no... We have no power going to them, so they're shut off right now. Okay guys, so if I go into the footwell module, let's see, actuation tests, heating and cooling, look at that, water valve. Let's see, we got nothing right now. I don't know if I'm on the wrong one. I might be on the wrong one. It says it activates for 20 seconds only. Let's go back to the other one. Activated for 20 seconds. We have nothing. Okay, guys, so that wasn't lighting. So we're still back probed in on the ground side. So look at this. If I touch here, it lights up. So we know our ground should be good, at least enough to turn on a solenoid, I would think, because it can light this test like fine. Although I did notice at the center bowl here. Oh, there it goes. It just looked really corroded, but does light it up so now we got to figure out why these other ones aren't turning on because I tried activating them both again uh, let's see if we have any codes no fall codes uh, let's see activation test which one am I on It's hard to see what color that is. It looks like violet. I oh, know it might be brown. Brown. So brown is. Which one is the brown? It doesn't tell me on here which one's which. I think I'm going to get my piercing probe and we'll make sure that we actually have a good contact. Or maybe I'll disconnect it. Maybe I'll unplug it. Okay, guys. Not going to lie. It took me like 15 minutes to figure this out because I couldn't figure out why every time I touch the test light on the circuit, the, the light wouldn't light up. I got the light up for like a split second and then that was it. Like I tried clearing codes several times. Could not get it to work. So... I even tried like a relay, because I put a relay on here by itself, trying to get the relay to click, because as soon as I would touch a test light, the voltage would drop down. Or even the relay, like it was just like a biased voltage on there. So what I found out just now was I turned the car off, that light goes on solid. Like I, tr I was trying to do bi-directional controls the whole time and it wouldn't do anything, so watch this. So our light's on, right there, start the car up. See the lights on and the light goes off. And I think we can move these like anywhere. Oh, now it went on. Okay, so I went to cold now. So that's good. There you go. Look at that. There's the driver's side. So we went down to 60. Now we went up to 84 and it goes. It goes off. So see it's off. We're at 84 right now. Turn it down. Let's see if I can get this all in one view. There you go, now you can see it. So the light's on out there. Watch this. I'll turn this up. Light goes out. Go back. Look at that. And the passenger side shouldn't do anything to this one. That is awesome. I wonder if I just had like a bad connection before. So I'm gonna connect this back to our ground right there. See if I can back probe it. And it will move our probe over to the other side. Okay guys, so I found out an issue. So I tried doing just a light bulb on here. And you need more current. So 
the relay's on here. I'm gonna go get a different type of bob and we're gonna try this just to confirm it. But I just fought with this thing for like 15 minutes after I took all this off to try to simplify it. And I just tried doing a light bulb just to test light. And it'll just flicker the light on one time, a key on, and that's it. And then after that, it won't turn it back on again. You can clear codes. It won't do it again. It does a quick test. And that's it. So I'm going to go get a light bulb. Uh, actually, I could probably show you guys this. Let's see. So if we take this out and we put just our light on, this bottom one is just my test light. Let's see. See how it just went out? It can't do the test light. I think it sees it as like uh, not pulling enough current and it won't turn this light on anymore. You saw how it just went on. But I bet you, don't know if we can put this all back on here. And it'll turn back on. I might have to clear codes for it to turn back on. It's just crazy that I need this relay. Let's see, cycle the key. It might not turn back on now. Oh, there it came back on. See, that light's on. Now, let's see. Let's see, if we take this down to just a light bulb, we'll try cycling it, but... Look at that. So, I left the bulb just on there. Just the bulb by itself. And we have no light. Let's try cycling this key. See that? See how it just turns on real quick and then shuts off? I'll do it again. Look at that. It thinks there's something wrong. Let me go get, I'm gonna go get like a 3157 bulb or something. Something that pulls slightly more current. Okay guys, so I got out my, uh, let's make sure this is in there. Okay. So I got out my 3157. It's on the low current setting. It should be around a half an amp. I don't have it written on this bulb. I have it written on my other bulb. Uh, let's see. Let's see if this makes a difference. Well, I didn't want it to start. Oh, look at that, our bulb is lit. Let's turn the temperature up, it goes out. Oh, look at that. See, that's the issue, it wasn't pulling enough current. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this. So we'll turn it up to 84. Bulb goes out, turn it down to 60. There we go. So now we got to move it over. Look at that. So now we just got to move over to the other wire and then test that one. I cannot believe that it was a current issue. This is what I try to tell people. These are variables. Like you can either pull too much current or you can pull too little current. And if it's not seeing like the voltage drop or the current, however, it's figuring it out, it might disable the circuit. So that turned off because the car is off. There's a, there's a delay. So I'm going to move this stuff out of here the way here and then we'll move that over to the other circuit okay guys so I moved it over to the other side and the other side lit up right away so let's come in here and make sure our passenger side works are we gonna be able to see the bulb nah, we're not gonna be able to see the bulb where we're at Hoping to be able to. There we go. Hopefully that's that'll stay there. Okay, so let's move to the passenger side now. Here we go. Look at that. What do you guys think of that bypass testing?
So I also had noticed that I'm probably not going to be able to show you guys too easily. But I had also noticed that there was a coolant leak down here. Let's see if I can show you guys. You might not be able to see it, but it's. Oh, you can kind of see it. See how it's wet down there? It's like dripping off of this. So uh, I don't know if the valve's leaking or if one of the hoses are leaking. So I'm going to call the customer see what they want to do. But hey, we bypassed it. Now, hopefully this will help people in the future. Oh, and this was the AES Wave uh, U-Test kit, by the way. It's the one that comes in the fancy case. So guys, look at this. There's smoke coming out of this valve. I just brought the car in to, uh, to uh, take it for... Uh, I mean to uh, change it, and these valves are shorting out. They're really, really hot right now. Now this was sitting outside for like three days. All I did was bring it in. Just crazy. And then there's all those leaves around it. I could see that being a fire waiting to happen. Look at all the smoke coming off. It's just pouring off of that valve. crazy. So I'm going to get some clamps so we can clamp this off and then we'll try to pull the valve out. But we got to clamp off the coolant so we don't lose a lot of coolant. Okay guys, so I got the new mo or new uh, heater valve assembly in there. Now we can take off all our clamps. There we go. And we have one more. And that should be good. Now we can run our coolant wires. Uh, this one. Let's see. There we go. And we can connect our tube up. And all we gotta do is move our reservoir over. Pull the reservoir out to push this on all the way because it ain't on all the way. And then we'll just have to clip our level sensor in. Should be good to go. Hey guys, so we got the BMW all back together. Check the coolant level. We'll start this up. We'll do a health report real quick. We'll see if we have any codes, but we shouldn't have anything really. It looks like we got one. Scan pretty quick. Okay, power management closed circuit current violation. Interesting. Oh, it says history. It's not even current. Look, history for the water outlets. Look at that. So we fixed it, guys. We fixed it, and we should be good to go. Hope you guys like it. See you later.